2023 is shaping up to be a banner year for education reform, with Governor Ron DeSantis signing a law last week that expands Florida's voucher program to every student in the state. This, as a defection from the Democratic Party in North Carolina, offers new hope for passage of school choice legislation there. Here's Democrat-turned-Republican State Representative Trisha Cotham earlier this week. On issues like school choice, like charters, we have to evolve. One size fits all in education is wrong for children. It might be okay for adults, but I am about children. Let's bring in Corey DeAngelo. He's a senior fellow at the American Federation for Children. Welcome, uh, sir. Good to have you here. So tell us what happened in North Carolina and was school choice really the trigger for that defection to the Republicans? Yeah, look, the Democratic Party has run so far left and, and opposed school choice and sided with the teachers union so much. They're alienating members from their own party. And as we've seen in North Carolina, they've even lost one of their own sitting legislators. And if they're not careful, if they continue this opposition to parental rights and education, they're going to lose something far more influential, which is parents who want more of a say in their kids' education. So in North Carolina now, you have supermajority uh, uh, override votes in each chamber, the House and the Senate. They also have a universal school choice bill floating around in the Senate with 30 co-sponsors, which is enough to override Roy Cooper's expected veto. Uh, so we're winning all across the country with school choice, and it's popular among Republicans, Democrats, and independent voters. So lots of progress in other states as well, including Florida, which has been a pioneer in school choice. But, you're, but this, uh, this, this year they're expanding it. Tell us how they are moving that uh, reform forward. Yeah, Governor DeSantis signed into law House Bill 1 that was championed by Speaker Paul Renner, and this expands their existing programs to all families, regardless of income, regardless of background, regardless of zip code. Now in Florida, all families have the right to take their children's education dollars to the education provider of their choosing. That could be the public school. If you like your public school, you can keep your public school. But if not, you can take that funding to a private school, a charter school, or home-based education option. Uh, so this is a huge win for Florida families. And this is the sixth state in just two years to go all in on school choice. The dominoes are falling, and there's nothing that Randy Weingarten and the teachers unions can do about it. So if you're like your public school in Florida and you get this uh, voucher, what do you spend it on? Uh, tutoring, if you want, uh, test training, uh, uh, you know, special uh, study. What do you do? That would just be business as usual. Your full funding that's meant for educating your child will continue to go to the public school. That option's still on the table. And in fact, there have been 11 studies out of Florida, and 10 of them have been found that statistically significant positive effects of private school choice competition on the outcomes in the public schools in Florida as well. So school choice has been a rising tide that lifts all boats for decades in Florida. And since we're seeing so much expansion in other states right now as well, we'll see American public schools, especially in red states where we're seeing these victories, will continue to compete up their game and do a better job for all kids. So one exception here to this trend you described is Georgia, where uh, they had a school choice bill that failed recently. Uh, and one of the, I guess the big reason it failed in a political sense is because a lot of Republicans who represent rural districts voted against it. Uh, of course, the unions were also uh, against it. But the, these Republicans, uh, and their basic argument is, look, uh, we like our public schools. And by the way, uh, in rural parts of the state, there aren't any options for us anyway. So uh, why should we vote for choice? Uh, is that how you diagnose what failed there? Well, this, yeah, it was some of the, the fake Republicans joining arms with the Democrats to kill it. It did pass the Senate, however, on a party line vote with all Republicans in favor voting for their party platform. But this excuse about being in rural areas is totally ridiculous because on the one hand, they'll say we don't have a lot of exit options. The public school is the only option. And then they'll say this is going to decimate our public schools. Which one is it? If you don't have any exit options, you should be the last person worried about losing funding from your public schools because families would continue to send their children there and those schools would continue to receive the funding. And oh, by the way, in rural areas, if you're representing a, an area that has great public schools, 
what should they have to fear from a little competition? So this is just an excuse for union endorsed and funded candidates to come out against their party platform issue and to vote with the establishment. But the, things are going to change. There's a sea change in momentum in Georgia. Republican primary voters, 79% uh, of them on the ballot last year supported a school choice proposition, which was up about seven percentage points since they last did it a couple of years ago on the ballot. So. We're, the momentum is on our side. There's a red state universal school choice revolution that's unfolding right before our eyes. And although Georgia didn't get it done this year, I expect it'll happen soon. The dominoes are falling in other states. Texas, is their Senate just passed on an 1813 vote, a universal school choice program, which would be huge, even bigger than Florida. Uh, so all eyes on Texas at this point. Is Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, in support of that? And is he going to push that hard? Oh, yes. And he's already been campaigning it to at least a dozen different cities across the state, pushing for parental rights and education, specifically calling school choice, universal school choice for all families, an emergency item this session. This is also a top eight GOP legislative priority in Texas this session. And 88 percent of Republican primary voters in Texas supported it on the ballot in uh, March of 2022. So that things are going well in red states. Hopefully right. blue states come along. The right. Democrats need to stop their op opposition to parents. All right, Corey DeAngelis, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it.